Gender advancement in the workplace has been in the spotlight amid concern that women are leaving the country for greener pastures. Recruitment agency Robert Walters claims to have a solution to that. It's drafted a white paper on gender diversity that aims to help employers attract and retain female employees. The white paper will be made public next week. In studio with us is Petra Cooper, manager at Robert Walters Recruitment Agency. Petra, thank you so much for coming in to speak to us today. It's a very interesting white paper indeed, but I want to just go back and start with the, the, the question, why are women either leaving the country or leaving the companies they work for? Well, essentially, thank you firstly for having me. There, we've noticed a trend in terms of companies just um, not, they, they realize that people are leaving businesses, specifically their top tier talented women, but they haven't addressed why. And most uh, prominent in, in the results that we received was the fact that they seem to be a little bit inflexible in terms of what attracts and what helps their female employees stay with them. Um, and they, they seem to be inflexible around it. So, so talk to us about the kind of issues that will keep a, a, an efficient, highly skilled woman working for you uh, or not. Perfect. So essentially our white paper has looked at what attracts a top tier talent woman to work for a company as well as also addressing retaining that top talent. So when we look at attracting the top talent there seems to be um, you know the similar things not different to our male counterparts, F flexible work hours, um, you know, accommodating them in terms of commitments outside of family, offering a higher salary or, or bonus, and just generally addressing and having a strategy in place that will address that gender diversity. So that specifically addresses attracting your top tier talent. When it comes to retaining talent, it has to be flexible working hours, offering part-time work, um, you know, looking at realizing that they have that um, outside family commitment and also often when people, for example, women go on maternity leave, that you still stay in touch with those people while they are on maternity leave so that you have a cohesive strategy that helps them to want to come back to work even though they are on maternity leave because it can be quite daunting to think, oh gosh, I have to return to work, how am I going to cope with all of, all of that? You know, it's, it's interesting well, what you're saying uh, all seems to feed into the idea that companies just don't have a a gender diversity policy mm. to start off with. Yes. How much of a help is it if, if you've got a framework within which you can bring these employees in and retain them? I think it's a, it's a, it will be a massive help and that is also the reason why we've done this research. We've surveyed 500 women at professional level and tried to see what exactly do they want in terms of career strategy and growth and we're trying to just provide information for companies that will essentially enhance having the strategy in place. So what it showed is number one, put a strategy in place specifically at um, board level already and number two it's essential that you actually communicate that to your staff in some kind of formal platform. You know it's interesting that there's, there's been minute progress in BEE over a period of, of 20 odd years. Why if we have a commitment to equity and it's legislated have we not seen the, the same kind of limited though it is the same kind of commitment towards empowering women in the workplace? Yes, that's very true. I think um, we will never be able to escape employment equity and the requirements of that and it's a fantastic way to really make sure that there is that diversity. Um, but maybe it is also just a fact that people haven't been equipped with the right information to know what will attract top tier talented women and essentially again that's why we're trying to provide them with the information to say here's a strategy take account of it, um, equipping them to help them realize that they can change it and with that commitment that they will also be able to send the right message to top talented people to be interested in their company. I mean, how do they start this? If, if, if someone f senior from a company is watching our interview right now and wants to know what to do in taking the next step to start attracting the kind of women you're mm -hmm. talking about. How do they go about it? What is that first step? Well, the first step would be to look at what strategies you currently do have in place. Then look at um, the information that we've gathered, for example, um, the, what will attract uh, the top tier talented people, and then specifically see how you can incorporate them 
to, um, into the strategy that you'd like to then have in your company. And it's very important that you have that at a board level, like I said, and that you're trying to also see that that diversity policy is in line with what you see in the greater community. Um, we're not really looking at anything that's trying to reinvent the wheel. It must just be representative of what we're seeing in, in the world, you know, in normal society, that it's representative and equal. I, I also notice, I mean, I have a very good friend who, who handled a massive merger between a foreign bank and a local one who's been out of the loop for a few years and now can't find work anymore. Uh, is, is there some sort of stigma attached to that? Should companies be more open to looking at women like that with all that experience? Absolutely. I, I do think there can be a, stra a stigma attached to it. Um, but there's some really talented people, look at your friend for example, and that is also what we're saying is that companies um, should realise that there's some really great talent that they can tap into and um, that a lot of women also, uh, they can you know, draw from that experience from previous years. But I think it also goes to the specific individual to say that these are the steps I've taken even though I haven't been in the workplace, but I've stayed in touch with what is relevant in my career and they can go for courses and essentially add that to, to their CV and say to a potential employer, I've taken the time to equip myself, stay in touch and I'm, I can still be a valuable asset. Thank you so much for talking to us. Very interesting indeed, Petra. Petra Cooper, manager at Robert Walters Recruitment Agency.